Pacinius made a slight cost saving modification and Hi, I am Hilal Alam from Al Zebra. In this episode, let us see how Pacunius made a slight cost saving modification in the concept and what happened the end. Errors at the conceptual stage is elusive. It will show up only in the prototypical stage, often with wholly unexpected or disastrous result. The conceptual stage is a creative act that takes nonverbal thoughts and can be expressed only in the form of drawings. The flaws, if any in the concepts, may be recognized intuitively at the instant the drawing is articulated in mind or in words or drawings. If they go unnoticed at that stage, it would be difficult to catch up early. This episode is all about that. Vitruvius in the first century before Christ documented the state of the art of buildings in ancient Greece and Rome in his book the 10 books on architecture, the oldest surviving book on engineering. In his book, Vitruvius mentions a case study of a design failure as a paradigm of errors in the conceptual design. Peconius, the Roman contractor, made a conceptual design change in the massive stone pedestal for a slight cost saving. Before coming back to Peconius, let us see how they moved the massive stones back then. The basic design problem back then was to transport massive pieces of stones such as shafts, architraves, pedestals, obelisks and the likes without breaking them. Because the stones were massive, the transporting wagons had to be strong and massive themselves. Their wheels had to be prevented from getting stuck in soft grounds. The design of wagons contains 6 to 8 wheels, not only that, the heavy blocks tax the strength of axles as well. How did then the people in ancient time make it? Let's begin with Chersifron. Chersifron did not rely on cords as they were prone to get stuck in soft ground or weaken axles. He came up with his own clever scheme by eliminating the cords altogether and converting the cylindrical pedestal itself as a wheel and an axle. He used lead and iron to fit pivots into the cutout center at both sides of the pedestals. He then made the wooden frame about the pivot around the giant roller. It was a successful scheme then. However, there was a problem. If the shaft or pedestals were in rectangular or square in cross sections, this wouldn't work. His son Meta Jeans improvised the scheme. He used a non-cylindrical shaft or stone as an axle and built wooden wheels about it. He used the same complex pivot cups to fix the pin to attach to the timber frame pulled by axle. The scheme was also successful. Cherry's Frown and Metagenes then published a book on their innovative designs. It was known to Vitruvius. Then came Paconius, a near contemporary of Vitruvius. Paconius seems to have read or heard about the method of transporting the giant pieces of stones. Paconius was tasked to shift a large stone pedestal from its quarry to the Temple of Apollo at Selenius. He was to replace the cracked pedestal there. Usually, the ends of architraves and columns would be invisible in a completed temple. So pivot point cutouts were of no matter. However, in the present case, the ends of the pedestal would be in clear view. Hence, Peconius did not want to drill to damage the ends of the column for pivot cups, and nor did he want to extend the frames from it. So he wanted to modify the scheme invented by Metagenes. He hit upon an idea of connecting two wheels either side and enclosing the stone with wooden frames to form a great wooden spool. He then wrapped a long rope around the pedestal. He wanted his axon to pull the rope so that the massive pedestal would be rolling to destination. Proud Pacunius began the parade. 
things were not up to his expectations. Every time he had to stop the cart to rewind the spool and restart the parade. Not only that, the spool did not roll straight. It started swaying away as it went along. Then all hell broke loose and he went bankrupt. Where he went wrong, he could have extended the stone out a bit for pivot cuts and later removed them at the installation site. He didn't. The probable answer would be he was likely to move it through narrow streets. Hence, he would have not considered to widen the system. He thus saved the labor cost without making pivots which needed skillful technicians and regular maintenance along the way. The rope might have been wound directly around either side. Well, in addition to save some labor cost by not having pivot cups, he would have also planned to reduce the number of oxen to pull or with the same oxen pull easily to reach the destination faster. Hence he apparently thought that new concept would cost him half the effort as that of earlier designs in which the force were applied at the axle of the column. In fact, the same problem popped out in 1586 when Fontaine shifted the 330-ton obelisk by 800 feet under the instruction from the Pope at St. Peter's Basilica. We saw that in my last video, Fontaine, the first civil engineer. We saw how meticulously he collected data, analyzed the situation and successfully carried out the mission. The link is provided below. Please watch it without fail. A conceptual design like Bacconi's case takes place in a non-verbal mode of thought and thus neither sentence nor logic is necessarily available for rationalization. This was one of the main reasons why Fontana was very careful since the beginning of the conceptual stage and determined the loading points through the analytical methods. Perhaps Bacconi's would have not been made available of those tools. These problems don't belong to those days. They are perennial issues being faced even today. However, we deal them using modern technologies with minimal compromises. In 2018, a massive 300 ton statue of the Lord Vishnu was moved from Tamil Nadu to Bangalore in 7 to 8 months. It took nearly 240 tire trailer to move the statue. At one point, it moved just 300 meters in three days, flattening several tires. The load distribution over the redundant axles and steering the awkward big vehicle through narrow street have been perennial problems since ancient time and today. The moral of the story is, Taconius case is one of the many case studies that shows how easily a designer concentrating on satisfying one kind of objective in detail can overlook other perspectives from the angle of the primary purpose of the scheme. Some people who move several large structures do not seem to be as meticulous as Fontana and they were about to make the kinds of what Taconius did. With this I am signing off to you in the next video. Till then, Vanakkam!